This is episode 21 of Discography Discussion. Thank you for listening and for subscribing. If you are not a subscriber, you can find everything Discography Discussion at DiscussMetal.com. We are on Google Play. We are on iTunes. We are on... What's up? This is Josh Toomey from the Talk To Me podcast, and I've got a message out there for Dan Terra. You need to come over to my side, come over to the good side, and listen to some Pantera. Love what Dimebag Daryl does with that guitar. He feels the guitar. Every ounce of his emotions and body go through his hands into the pickups, out the Randall speakers, and into the amphitheaters so that everybody could hear what he had to say. So you need to love, love and respect Dimebag Daryl. Also, you need to listen to what Rex is doing because Rex is a bass player. He, oh, Jesus Christ. You go and listen to those bass lines under Dimes solos and you will just completely be blown away. And the man, Vinnie Paul, behind the drum kit out there, millions of tons of steel coming at you. So much, so innovative in what he does. And Dan, if you cannot understand what I'm talking about, you just might not know music. And you've proven that by saying that Zayo is your favorite band. So, we're probably never going to be on the same page on this one. So, Dan, I'm coming for you. Pantera's coming for you. The Cowboys from Hell are coming for you. And we'll talk to you soon. Uh, what's up, Eric? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. I lost all my thunder. I like your shirt. He has to say nice. I really my like face, your shirt. Man. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Thank you. Big oh, fan. yeah. This is, uh, same here. I can't remember what tour it was, 2014. Yeah. I got the poster on my wall. Yeah, 14 with Mastodon and or Slayer. I don't remember. I've seen them three times. Dude, Mastodon's good enough for me. I, I'd take a Mastodon a, Gojira show any day. I think that was I think that's what it was. Mastodon Gojira Kvelterak or whoever, whatever their band is called. Yeah. Kvelt or something like that. I don't know. The guy had like wings on for half the set. It was weird. That's cool. As long as it sounds I guess good, so. right? <laughs> yeah, it wasn't bad. It sounded okay. I was like, well, dude, are you going to shake right. those things off or what? Do I sound good to you guys? At least? You sound I mean, amazing. Right, level wise. Okay. Who do you have? Who's your internet provider? Um, that is, it's an interesting thing because I have Comcast or Xfinity. Okay. But to be in the basement, I have, an, I have a TP-Link power line adapter, meaning I plug into my router upstairs into a the, the adapter number one uh-huh. that runs through the electrical current into my basement which is power line adapter number two and then out hardwired into my computer so i'm actually getting my wi-fi from upstairs uh-huh. but it's not so much not so much a, like a router or an extender down here as a, as a power line adapter okay it kicks ass before I've, I've i mean for like a good six six months i couldn't i could hardly i mean i had to edit my episodes together oh i'm sure like I, I just had no connection down here and i finally figured it out a buddy of mine was like try this and it's it works great power over like, ethernet holy shit yep and if you finally figured it out, then you are ready for this episode of Discography Discussion. I am Joe. That is Dan. That is Jeff. That is Eric Hall from Shoot the Shred. Yeah. You wanted the shred. You got the shred. What's up, Eric? We love the shred. What's happening? You love the shred? Oh, I appreciate it. I love yeah, you guys. Really I appreciate it. Uh, first of all, I appreciate you guys having me out. I dig the show, and you guys have had some cool conversations about a a lot of bands. Most recently, I listened to the In Flames one, and uh, oh, man. I was kind of I was kind of on board with you guys for, for about the, the timeline that you guys were like, yeah, I'm not so into <laughs> In Flames anymore. So I, I was on the same page with you guys there, and especially the most recent album. It's like, why did you guys even put that out? Right. Anyway, we're not here to talk about that, but <laughs> I, uh, I had had a little bit of uh, alcoholic beverage before that, so yeah. All good. <laughs> it showed. Yeah, it did. Even, even sober, though, that would be a... An adequate representation of their their story or, or their career arc. Sure. Down. So <laughs> who are we here to talk about, Eric? The, well, I was going to say the legendary He Is Legend. And I'll, I'll go with that. The legendary He Is Legend. Is that Why like the, redu- the Department of Redundancy Department? Yes, I've been there and uh, I reside there. I work there. Uh, yeah, I get uh, health insurance from them and all kinds of stuff. It's a, it's a government job. It's cool. Nice. <laughs> so yeah, man, yeah. He Is Legend. Like, I've been... I've been a little bit of a He Is Legend fanboy for years, which doesn't necessarily like necessarily like match up with my metal persona, you know. <laughs> but uh, I can't deny it, man. You know, good music is good music, and uh, He Is Legend really grabbed me by the balls and, and has held me there. I've been a huge fan since uh, Suck Out the Poison came out, and uh, I just can't say no. <laughs> I totally agree with that. 
See, I I'm totally just the agree opposite, with that. man. I like this stuff before. So before I, before what? Before suck out the poison? Yeah, suck out really? the poison. Really? Yeah, I know. I, I'm kind of. They kind of went a little too over polished mainstream rock for me. I guess. Ooh. I don't know. So you're an I am Hollywood kind of guy, Jeff. You need to read the lyrics. Yes, I am. The lyrics are. Don't get me wrong. I'm, you know me. I'm not a lyrics guy. I'm more of a, a feel guy. So well, you know, sometimes you know you need to change your point of view on things. <laughs> Is that like you and Pantera, Dan? Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to lie, I Am Hollywood might be my favorite record, but it's not like, this is my favorite He Is Legend record. It's like, I love putting on I Am Hollywood because it's like legit, mm. it's punk. You guys are yeah. living in the dark. I'm it, sorry. It, well, I, I Am Hollywood's just a punk record, let's be honest. Not even close. It's the Meat Puppets in 2004. Nope, don't give a shit, you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I hate to be that way, but I'm like three steel reserves in. 21 years Whoa, of this guy. Reserve. I'm yeah. still wrong. Well, I started with this. I haven't drank that since college, man. You're you're balling out of control. No, I'm just... <laughs> Holy I'm, shit. I'm, I'm poor. <laughs> so, it's a dollar like fifty a, a tall like, boy. Yeah, it's like a buck 48 for... <laughs> You're a tall yeah, boy, yeah. so yeah, you don't, you're not drinking that that for pride. That's for sure. You're just like, no, it's all sure. I got, man. It's cheap. Yeah, I can it's, drink it. It's it is what it is, for sure. So, he is legend started out as they were actually called something else. They were called the Uriah Omen. Yes, when they first started, and I remember that because uh, this might be a little too revealing, but I used to be into this band called Dead Poetic. Oh, man, me too. Yeah, yeah, and they had a. Uh, they posted on their website one day that they had such a fun time out on tour with their buddies in the Uriah Omen. And uh, I guess maybe like two, three minutes later, or, you know, months, it turned out that the Uriah Omen had been signed to Solid State Records and they had changed their name to He Is Legend. And there was only one one record available. It was called, uh, what is it, 9 one, I, I don't remember the number. Yeah, 91025. Nine, yeah. 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 So... I listened to that, and um, I actually liked it because, again, I was listening to shit like Dead Poetic at the time, so it was very enjoyable to me in the sense that it was mainly rock, I would say rock, emo rock, maybe, but, you know, it, it had this edge to it, it had this hardcore edge, because you can't, you can't be signed to Solid State Records and not have a little bit of a hardcore edge, Yeah, you know? Uh, and so that record, you know, kind of impressed me. I wasn't like sign on as a super fan, but, uh, you guys want to talk about that record? Yeah, I do. Cause that's actually my favorite. So. Well, take it away, Jeff. Oh shit. I'm in trouble now. I got beer to drink. <laughs> yeah, you do, man. You, you, uh, you're way ahead of me. Cause I don't get to drink anything at all. No, I'm, I actually really didn't listen to any, he is legend until I knew we were going to be doing this podcast. It just normally wasn't my cup of tea because most of everything I heard was their newer stuff so and it's fired. just a little too polished a little too mainstream for me at least for the the sound of it and uh, then when I was going through on my Spotify uh, playlist and 90125 came up and I was like wow this is uh, a little different and then uh, because I, I, the first thing I listened to is Scram Toots and I was like wow that's uh, that's <laughs> It's, just, it's not, it's what, not what you're expecting. What's no, it? no, not at all. <laughs> not after hearing everything else that they had. I was like, wow, this is a, this is a, something I could, I can have a little fun with. And I think that was probably my other problem too, is I, I went in probably too much of a critical listener. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I think that's, that, that, that'd be a good point because you went in listening without having the, the benefit of following their discography as it went along because they've, they've changed, but it's been subtle and but where they're at now is really awesome. But from the beginning to the to now, it's like a lot of things happen in the gap there. So that, to, to have it happen over years would be yeah. So if right. you listen to it all right now, yeah, it's just yeah, like yeah, for it's, sure. it's, You're it's hard to do it in fast forward. But then I also realized I just needed to chill out a little bit, you know, and just have a little more fun. You while, did while, while you did. listening yeah. to it, and I did. I mean, that's I, exactly I, what you got to do with them. I, I I started to enjoy it quite a bit more the more that I was like, oh fuck it, you know, just just put it on, you know. Play some Diablo three and just you know, not be the critical listener that I would on say something like the Contortionist. Well, you know, or Gojira for that matter. Right. And I get that it was a little bit like because normally whenever I'm recommending bands to people, it's always like ultra technical, you know, melodic stuff. And uh, 
whenever I was like, "Hey, Jeff, we're doing the we're doing He Is Legend this week," he was like, "Okay, cool, I'll check him out." <laughs> and then, like two days later, he was like, "Wait, what?" <laughs> and uh, I was like, "Dude, no, trust me, it, it, it's cool. It gets it gets awesome." Um, I think I think I described it as they're kind of like having fun on the first two records and then definitely and then you get to he is le- you or you get to um suck out the poison and it's like goes to a really dark place <laughs> yeah that album's a lot heavier than i remember it I oh my I god it. dude M- you know uh, mushroom river but we'll talk about that in a minute but well eric you ma- you mentioned the changes that happened in their discography they really just one thing that stands out is they kind of slow down a little bit on every record yeah they did. They're more. I say they're more in, in in line with like groove stuff. You know, mm-hmm. it's like a heavy heavier groove, more uh, sure, more more vibe so much. Like the 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 atmosphere has changed. And um, when I had Adam on my podcast, that's one thing I brought up to him was that I noticed a lot of things in the background that he's doing guitar wise with you know reverb and delays and stuff that are just layered in the back. And he really appreciated that I noticed that because I think that's that's one thing that's different from what they used to do and what they've evolved into i mean the core members are still there they've gone through a couple drummers and you know added a guitar player here and there but i mean that's that's the core lineup has evolved into this groovier heavier darker a little bit i don't know i, I don't say they, i wouldn't say they lost the party vibe but <laughs> it's still there if you've ever seen them live sure, that's just yeah. how skyler is i mean that's how they are but um sonically yeah they've they've definitely slowed down a little bit well, so on their first release, like the singing wasn't there really. Mm-hmm. Um, He's had a weird progression vocally too. Absolutely, which I, like I've noticed the first record. He really just kind of sounds kind of bad. Like it's I was weird. in a, I was in a band in like two thousand two, two thousand three, and I sang very similarly mm-hmm. to that. And uh, yeah, it was one of those like I would show it to people, and they'd be like, "Oh wow, you guys need to get a singer that can sing." And I was like. That's 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 that's, me that's supposed to be me. Yeah, right. <laughs> I'm the guy who could sing. What do you think I'm doing it for? Right, but uh, this is you know unlike me, this is somebody that got much better uh, over time. And, really, he uh, did. I, I, yeah, I agree with you. But uh, you know, on this first release, they really weren't they really weren't his legend yet. Like they didn't really oh, have so. that cemented sound. I mean, they had you know kind of lyrically they were um, closer to what they kind of are now. Yeah, I think his lyrics have always been there. Yeah, um, I don't know if you listened to our episode with uh, Brandon Kellum of American Standards, but uh, we described he is legend as kind of a rapey band. <laughs> <laughs> the lyrics, <laughs> the lyrics are kind of rapey, you know. <laughs> and, oh, they're definitely uh, they're definitely weird, and they're kind of I, I, yeah, I know what you mean. If you've read them or listened to them or heard, or heard them, they're they're sometimes like plays on words, and they're but they're kind of weird, and they're very uh, you know. Rapey, I guess. It's a little creepy, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's, uh, sometimes they are. <laughs> and uh, well, yeah. I mean, like, yeah, what, what was the song? Uh, it's not Scram Toots. It's the one that's right after that. Um, I I have the list up in front of me. Jeff, Suave. Jeff does too. I'm really Suave. bad about doing my research. You're talking What's about Suave. Suave. Suave, yeah. And he's all like, um, just as the line stop i gave her pills to go to sleep and yeah, <laughs> like, yeah I wonder my body is so, he's writing in the, yeah, I, yeah I my mind is so x-rated the sex is overrated you're like yeah i wonder what? like if he's like into a uh <laughs> i don't know he's he's like um taking on a character i mean like i wonder i want to know like another thing too lyrically which we'll talk about over the course of the albums there's a lot of like connections drawn lyrically between album to album I mean, oh yeah the gardener. who the fuck is the gardener i don't know but right, it's, the, the whole parts, china yeah. white series yeah, yeah. E- even then like there's there's references to other songs and even some of the more more modern releases you know the newer releases which i think is really cool i think he's a he's a really good lyricist even if it is kind of fucked up <laughs> yeah it's a little it's a little different but uh i don't remember what album it was but i was writing with you and your wife and the word that came out of her mouth was solid gold it was just I'm not comfortable listening to this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, that was uh, that was all suck out the poison. It oh, was uh, yeah. Virginia Wolf. <laughs> yeah, oh, she, that's right. She, uh, We're she gonna had, get to that a little she later. She had major issues with that. <laughs> um, I gotta say on, on this album too, on uh, nine one nine one zero two five. I mean, guitar wise, being a guitar player. I mean, this album came out when I was when did it come out? Two thousand four, I think. So I was yeah. I was in college. I was probably twenty one, twenty ish right. college era. This, I mean, I think it was, I think I found out about I Am Hollywood first and then went back and heard this album, but I mean, that was a somewhat 
inspirational time musically for me. I was starting to become, you know, getting into a little, little bit heavier music and going down this kind of road. Right. And guitar wise for me, something that's always stuck with me and a standout on this album is the the very beginning and just the guitar playing in general on either they decorated for Christmas early or they're all dead. That that like triplet delay. Great title. Yeah, I know. And even the, but it's funny. Like even those those titles are how that all that metalcore stuff was for a long time. They've, sure, they've kind of gotten yeah. away from that, but it's very yeah. of the era. Mm. But I, I just wanted to point that song out as something that I heard and was like, whoa, holy shit, man, that's awesome. As a guitar player, right? So that kind of hooked me in too. I was like, how did they do that? No, I know. Yeah, no, they did a really good job. I mean, like I've heard, I've heard much worse debuts. Yeah, exactly. You got to think about it. It, it. It's funny to go back to what they are now, and it was. I mean, I haven't listened to that album specifically in a long time. And again, when I had Adam on the podcast, I went back and listened to it to like just refresh my memory. And I'm like, man, I like them a lot more now. But before, I used to think they like you know this is this is how they sound. This is great, right? And it's and, and it, they've they've just evolved a lot, and for better or worse. But they no, do I sound don't think different. I don't think for worse at all. Um, I don't either. I don't either at all. I really like what they've done. Have you ever noticed the two at the beginning of that song, uh, the decorated for Christmas or they're all dead earlier, they're all dead? Uh, did you ever notice that like that song has a lot of similarities to uh, New Medicines by uh, Dead Poetic? Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. Very similar, but it's yeah. it's it's better somehow. And uh, <laughs> yeah, they're still around. Dead Poetic is not. <laughs> right. Yeah. So you know, there you go. Yeah, but, uh, so they get the benefit of the doubt. Like, well, even if it is rip off, but uh, we, we made it further. So I don't think it's a rip off. I think it's like a no, we, so. we can do this way better. <laughs> yeah, um, exactly. Yeah, they, they, yeah they, they just took it and ran with it. Absolutely. So, here, listen to this. So this was this was a really good debut for the band, and um, it definitely got me interested. I wasn't like a thousand percent on board when I heard it because, like, I, at that time I was like really into Zayo, and um, you still am, uh, but. <laughs> I was really, I was really into stuff like Zayo and uh, you know Asley dying and um, Kill Switch Engage and like th- that kind of stuff and but oh, yeah, th- this got me, sure. this got me very interested and uh, whatever they put out I am Hollywood I was like really blown away. Mm-hmm. That was some of the heaviest stuff. I mean, you got to remember my my in, in uh, how do I say it? To me. Heavy, heavy music isn't I never was in never grew up listening to like death metal or anything really heavy so to me that album was pretty heavy sure I, I, yeah. I just didn't I didn't have that I mean to me Slipknot's debut in, in Iowa were the heaviest things I'd ever heard I just right, never got right. into the, the darker heavier stuff that maybe I know about now I still don't love it all that much but to me that was a heavy album I can help you with I, that I'm Hollywood <laughs> I know I know yeah no I'm it's false all good. metal I'm false metal I talk about metal all the time and then I say I've only heard a risk by metal. dude it's okay I'm, I'm the guy that doesn't like Pantera so uh, that's, that's true exactly you know, exactly that's, that's but no I'm... this is def- definitely definitely a heavy album and it was a uh, I mean c- to compare the two to go from from their their debut to to I am Hollywood I mean I, I think right there is when you notice the production uh, absolutely yeah I mean you can you can hear that solid state dollar you know behind exactly, that yeah. and uh yeah. it was really interesting too because like uh we talked about on our uh american standards episode american standards episode is that um you know solid state was like the christian label <laughs> like he is legend couldn't have been like any further from exactly. that you know <laughs> it, totally I, I remember thinking like these guys cannot be religious band they're not like a religious band at all and i'm like i am legend is that a reference to god and it's like oh no not at all actually no, it's, about a, it's, it's this book yeah 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 like <laughs> and oh, then okay. a crappy movie oh, starring Will sorry, Smith. Yeah. that's what i was I, I said what i meant to say but you, you know what i'm saying sure i get you will smith baby singing was way better on this um yeah i want i mean it's one of, one of those things you wonder like how, how much you know to, to go from this album to the next album like how 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 much studio magic was involved? I don't know. I think he, I think he got better Who over cares? the course of the years too. So it's great. I, don't, I mean, studio stuff. I mean, trickery like that. I don't, I don't really have a problem with. You know, you're in the studio. You got the money. Make it sound good. Sure. Why not? It's an album. It's not. I mean, live. You can do whatever. And but, I mean, it was really cool away. hearing like kind of this like almost like Foo Fighters sound. Yeah, mixed with hardcore, you know. I think that's why I liked it so much too. Yeah. I never, I never knew it was it was all like a new thing to me in this style of music. I think they, I think the, these guys stood out among that whole scene of uh, of this kind of sound because it had like a lot of really bluesy stuff, and there was some mm-hmm. real like jazzy like guitar lead stuff and break. The greatest actor and, and it, alive or dead, yeah. amazing. Was, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it's and it gets really heavy too. Mm-hmm. My exact review of this album was finally some punk rock hardcore. Oh, wait, there's metal, too. 
it's a yeah, it's just a good because they just fall into these yeah. random Zayo parts, and I'm like, all right, didn't see that coming. <laughs> yeah, I love that. I love. I think this kind of uh, kicked off my my love for music that that jumps genres. Like it's not one thing the whole time. I mean, musically, that's what I love. It's I love just the heavy. Music. Yeah. Yeah, I love things that just, you know, sneak some electronics in there. I mean, mm-hmm. I'd like things that just grab and, and make a, you know, but that can also sound like shit, you sure, know, if it's yeah. not done right. I think these guys. No, they really know, just, captured just, it on, on I Am Hollywood. And I mean, mm-hmm. it, there's a reason why it's their most popular album, because I don't think it's like super polarizing. Yep. Yeah, exactly. It, it, it covers a lot of bases. I saw them uh, a few weeks ago, well, a few months ago in March, and they still play that. So they still play I Am Hollywood. They play a lot oh, of yeah. these songs. But they play, I, I think they close with I Am Hollywood. Well, I mean, you, I mean like, you, you have, have to. to. It's, it's yeah, and they still do know. it. And the crowd still goes nuts for it. They still yeah. sound great playing it. So oh yeah, I it's, mean it's it's, it's hard good. because like you know with uh, I always felt like with He Is Legend that they wanted to be a rock band, but kind of always felt like if they didn't throw the screaming and the breakdowns in, that that people wouldn't listen to them. Yeah, and that's a result of being on solid state records, you know, early on in your career. Yeah. That if Especially we don't, if we don't, yeah, if we don't do this these specific things, then nobody's going to give a shit, you know. Is that the truthless hero syndrome? A little bit, yeah. Like uh, people, people just wanted to hear the screaming, and they wanted to hear the the you know the breakdowns. They wanted to hear the you know the intensity. And with Hughes Legend, though, I, I found something really special. Like some of the songs, I find myself really liking on that record aren't necessarily the ones that everybody else likes like i really like uh eating a book oh yeah and um dinner with a gypsy uh that's actually my favorite song on of I off say, of uh eat, eat a book is Hollywood. my favorite yeah and uh the lyrics are just kind of goofy and uh that's really refreshing because like i listen to a lot of like really fucking serious metal <laughs> yeah <laughs> and uh he is legend has always just really been refreshing to me because they're um you know, not that they're not super serious. Um, I think I think they can be emotional in places, but right. I think they always they always kind of keep it light, keep it a little bit more party. You know, especially in that in that time frame again, like they 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 fit that mold. I think they broke out of it, and that's probably why they're still they're still pretty successful. But mm-hmm. they they fit into that mold of you know breakdowns, singing, and sonically they fit into this mold, but. They transcended it lyrically because they weren't singing about what the typical metalcore metalcore band was singing about. Right. Yeah. I mean, it was a lot of like emo metalcore stuff. You know, they like, weren't talking about Jesus. They weren't talking about their yeah. girlfriend. They weren't yeah, talking about yeah, like. I mean, yeah, the lyrics had like a weird. Yeah, they were like they were like stories. It was weird. It was like it, it's it fit it in the sound wise, but lyrically it was like this doesn't really fit, but it fits. So yeah. But it was but you could tell yeah, people like it for that reason. That's they why, make again, it why fit. Still around. Yeah. So a little rapey uh. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say it's like somebody was yeah. writing an 80s horror movie and then they said you know, you know what this is a bad script but these are great lyrics I can't say <laughs> I can't say make it fit without saying the word rapey um, <laughs> wow, I want to I want to hear I want to hear Jeff's opinion though because he's been quite the, big, the biggest mystery to me uh, <laughs> this entire week because I keep texting him about his legend and he always gives you really ambiguous answers <laughs> yeah I, that might have been on purpose yeah I, <laughs> <laughs> I just, I'm not loving, I'm not loving them as much as the rest of the room. I guess. I oh just, man, I know, I know. It's shame on me. But first, you know, first Callisto, and now. Oh, dude, I couldn't, I couldn't handle Callisto at all. Uh, I, unfortunately, <laughs> no, I like this more than Callisto. But the way I looked at it, I was like, he's giving me. I first, I thought he gave us, gave me this as a joke. I mean, I know that sounds terrible, but that's my. No, uh, dude, that, this that's, is that's, great. That's my. That, that was my. I, well, I, I'm. I'm a lot like to me. I, I don't like saying bad things unless I absolutely you need to listen have to. to. You need to listen to. Let it out. It Jeff. hates you. Say it's, it. It's butt rock, and you can't stand it. No, that, uh, you just nailed it on the head, dude. No That's, way. That's not butt rock. Well, not this uh, album. Not but this later album. On, but later yeah. on, it sure as hell gets there. But well, at least that's my opinion. But i have always been more about the weird technical crap that's coming out of Europe. You know, that's that's kind of my vibe. Yeah, this is not yeah, this is not that for sure. That's <laughs> how yes. he that's how he landed the position on the show. Yeah, yeah, so I mean it's just, you know, I have a different background with the type of metal that I like. Yeah. And so this just wasn't, you know, didn't just I didn't I couldn't feel the vibe and it took me I probably did more prep work for this episode than I have any of the others cuz I was trying to find you know you know, different perspectives on when I was listening to it to make me like it more. Cause Dan's like, this is so good. And I'm, I'm trying to, 
I'm trying to see where he's coming from to find out why he likes it so much. And it really, uh, why, and he, you guys have mentioned a couple times, it's that party vibe. I think that's what it is. It's just yeah. the, the let loose. And, and as soon as I stopped being so critical, right, exactly. I, 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 I did enjoy myself more. It, but I, this is my second favorite. And then, like I said, I, I, I guess I'm going in reverse. I like their I, I like their older stuff more than I like their newer stuff, and it's not even close. I, I'm in the same boat. Give it time. Yeah, I, yeah, I mean, it's I felt the same way, but give it time. But um, I, I've never been a a rock person ev- ever. Like rock music just doesn't do anything. Doesn't for scratch me. the itch. I get it. it. Yeah, you know, if I'm gonna if I need something that's popular like that i'm probably going to go more towards like the electronic side of things if i'm ever going to listen to anything popular well i mean that's why we're all into metal right because rock didn't just quite do it for us yeah right? that's exactly it but here's what i'm going to do i'm going to load the fucking cannon on one side we have dan on the other side we have eric i'm going to pull out suck out the poison i'm going to light the fuse and suck out the poison oh my god i love suck out the poison it is like worlds beyond what what he is legend. I even thought was capable of. I mean, you've like okay. So at that time, what we what year was stuck out the poison? Two thousand and five, six, two thousand five or six, something six, like that. Yeah. So like it was really cool at that time for bands to be southern rock. Like totally. metalcore bands to be southern rock. So you had like uh, mainly in the Sons of Disaster. You had um, Inhale Exhale went went southern rock for a while. Um, the Showdown went southern for a while. The Showdown. I forgot about those guys. The Showdown. Yeah, cheesy. But uh, but yeah. So like everybody was southern rock at the time. But my God, did he his legend blow it out of the park? Th- I mean, like. The biggest issue everybody had with this record was that, that the singing was different. It was more rock. It was more butt rock for Jeff. Yes. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> it was more Southern. And it encompassed a lot of things that I claim to hate about Phil from Pantera. But um, it was very um, it was very Southern drawl. But there was this growl behind it. And it had this grit that I just couldn't I couldn't let go. Um, I mean, right from the get-go, uh, Virginia Wolf is just so... It's a sequel to The Seduction off of I Am Hollywood, and it functions in that in that respect in every way. Right down to the ending screams of, You know you want it! You know, like, it's just Yeah, exactly. Awesome. That's, that's what I'm saying. Like, they, they, they do these little word play of lyric plays where they, they throw back to a different different song and right in the same album, and then, you know, kind of... It's a carry-on it's a carry from previous stuff. Yeah, it's... Well, so, like, when I listen to this, I, I feel like I'm in the deep south. Mm-hmm. I feel like, you know, you have to walk 15 miles to get to the local general store, you know? Um, yep. Like a very a very mountain moonshine-making uh, type, uh, type of community. And, uh, again, just like the previous albums, it's a little rapey. Uh, um, <laughs> and, uh, you know, he says, if I cannot have you, no one will. And... Uh, and it just gets it gets a little uncomfortable in places. Uh, there's a song called Electronic Throat where he's all like, I brought you into this world and yeah, I, I will take you out, baby girl. You know, it's my, one of my favorite rec- songs on the record. It's just so Southern. That, so, that song is so good. It's like it's like Skinnered on cocaine. You know, I mean, it's just it's insane. See, I don't when I think of the this album, I don't think uh, Southern rock. I think a Canadian rock and I think Theory of a Dead Man. Ugh. no. Oh, dude! You couldn't, it, you couldn't be more wrong in your opinion. I yeah, but that's the direction that I start feeling it's going. That, that's all I'm saying. <laughs> You're I'm this saying close. <laughs> <laughs> no, you mean the next album. You mean yeah, it hates no, you. Yeah, th- yeah. Well, I'm saying it's it's moving in that direction, and just man, I, I don't know. I just I had a hard time on this one. Uh, a really dude, hard. T- time. <sighs> I said it. It took me a little while to get into it, only because the the, the style did change. I would say pretty drastically. Yeah. Um, a buddy of mine bought it in high. We, you know, we had it in, high, in college, and uh, you know, we were. He would play it all the time at our tailgate parties. You know, we'd always try to play some metal, something heavy, and we both, we all loved his legend at the time. But at first, I was kind of like, man, this is. I, I don't know. It was it was different. But it took me a while to get into it, and then eventually, I really really kind of clicked with me. 
because I love I love riffs, man. And, and oh, Adam dude, is just it's a riff, a riff machine. fest, man. I don't care. I mean, sometimes I just care how good are your riffs. And there's all kinds of fucking riffs on this album. No joke, dude. Mushroom River. Yeah, I mean, this Mushroom is where you, River I, is I one really, of the heaviest rock songs I've ever heard in my life. I love. I just. I love the album. Yeah. I think that. I think that um, if they would have put out another I Am Hollywood, they wouldn't. They wouldn't really be. They, I don't know. I don't know what would have happened because I feel like that that sound was ending. It was. And th- and this not that this wasn't becoming a thing like you mentioned the metalcore bands were going this direction, but I think I think they did it better than everybody else that put an album out like this for sure. I think and this, they, this they really had the, the they always, atmosphere. They, yeah. they always they always have their own. There's a, there's a he has legend flavor. There's a, there's a vibe, and I, I always feel like when I listen to he has legend, I'm just like drenched with this vibe and attitude, atmosphere. Like they just yeah. I don't know something something about their music. Like you know it's he is legend, whether you like it or not. Like it's this is a he is legend song. The riffs are there, lyrics are there, vocals, and the vocals changed on this album too. And that was a big thing to listen so to. So good, and like his singing, I think is is really top notch on uh, on suck out the poison. More so yeah. than it had been ever before. Like, uh, if you listen to songs like "The Potbelly Goddess," he sounds amazing yep. on that. And like, you know, like Jeff said, you know, it's a, it's a little mainstream. It's a little butt rock. Oh, you know? totally. It definitely but, is. But it's okay because, like, again, I, I always say that he's legend as a lyric fan because. Well, listen that's to probably what, that's my disconnect. You then. listen to Electronic Throne, and he's like, there must have been a mix-up in. Along the yeah, way, he's along the made way up a girl, yeah. I must have made a mistake. Now listen closely to what I'm gonna say. If you cross me, I'll cut you. Yeah, like, I don't know. It's just like, like the lyrics fit in with the atmosphere of the album. I just feel like every time I mean, when I listen to Skylar sing and the, the lyrics he writes, I just feel like that is him. Like his, his, his have you ever yeah. listened to him talk or you've seen him live? He's just like this charismatic dude, and I feel like it comes across in the way he sings. Yeah, oh yeah. Especially on this album, start starting on this album forward. He really just puts his persona in the album. Yeah, yeah. Like I feel like this record is a kind of more of a realization of of him. Yeah, as a person than than we had even gotten on I Am Hollywood. Yeah. I feel like I Am Hollywood, while being still being a great record, was uh, kind of derivative of the music of the time. Whereas yeah, I think so. Suck out the poison. I mean, yeah, it was, sure. It might have been derivative in that everybody was going southern, but like you said, nobody nobody really did it like he is legend did. You have these it's like fat, heavy, fucking Skinner drifts playing, and it was just it. It was derivative, sure, but like, I feel like it captured more of what the band was trying to do. Yep, all and you can along, see that, yeah. more you can so see that, yeah. than yeah. the previous albums really gave them the ability to do so. And I, you can hear that going forward. I mean, what what they did moving on, it became darker. You said it. The, the tempos were a little slower. The grooves oh, yeah. were, were bigger. Yeah. I feel like the, I feel like the grooves, just the whole thing. I don't know how to exp- I don't know how to put it into words, but like every time I listen to them, I just f- I feel like a weight. Like it's heavy. The grooves are there. It's like thick. Yeah, I, I feel taken I mean, away, like some to somewhere else. You know, I feel yeah, I feel like, like I'm a in a past different life or something. You know, like yeah. um, <laughs> just this whole like, especially in Suck Out the Poison, it's just this like mountain man kind of uh, kind of vibe. You yeah. know that it gives off, and uh, it's just phenomenal. Um, Say Mushroom River is really great. Uh, Potbelly Gal- Goddess is great, and um, oh for sure, yeah, like uh, Curse of the Dungeon Witch or Attack of the Dungeon Witch. Yeah, uh, this Virginia album, Wolf. I just, mean, it's just it never ends. It's yeah, just it's yeah. It's when it's, I, heavy, it's heavier than I think. Sorry to cut you off. It's 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 heavier than I remember it being. Even when I go back and listen to it, it's like wow, this is this has a lot. This is a lot heavier than I even thought it was. Oh yeah. And I don't know. I mean, not like not like a heavy in a metal sense, like heavy, like just sonically as a weight. No, to I think it is in a metal sense because like yeah. it's not right. it's not usual on our show to talk about bands like He Is Legend because it is it is more firmly rooted in rock, definitely. But you look at albums like Suck Out the Poison, and it's actually very metal. Yeah, like it's it's heavy. It's aggressive. It's um, it's uncompromising. It makes people uncomfortable. I mean, look at China White Part Two. That oh, is yeah, for sure. one of the most uncomfortable songs to listen to ever. Yeah, you know, See, like me, yeah, I'm a big fan of like true crime and like you know serial killers and stuff like that. So like, 
a song like that I actually find enjoyable, but it's kind of fucked up that I find it enjoyable. So I like know that I know that Skyler's really into that stuff. Mm-hmm. I, I I when I saw them, I talked to him a little bit about some true crime stuff, and his his dad and his brother are both private private investigators. Oh wow! So he he's all he's all about this shit. Like right. he's just all about the true crime and. So I mean, you can I mean, once I once I, you know you know that you're like oh that's it probably informs a lot of his lyrical content and stuff especially especially that song you know. China so White. so in your opinion, what do you what do you think the China White songs are about? I I don't know. I mean, no uh, <laughs> I mean I, I I've thought about it, but I don't I, I don't think too much about it. Sometimes his lyrics are a little uh, not guarded, but they they're kind of in different they go in different directions i don't i don't know exactly i, don't, I wouldn't yeah. say i even know what that that song is about i mean the only the way why dan's I'm, asking is because he doesn't know himself the so. way i'm hearing it is <laughs> uh yeah i'm i'm uh i'm 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 defaulting to a superior podcaster um so like for me it sounds like a fucking home invasion you know like china white part two part one's really ambiguous uh yeah, part yeah. two i mean Little girl standing there with your daddy's skin, and your mama's hair, like yeah, it's fucked. Isn't it's it? terrifying. Like it's weird too because they keep keep going on about like I'm your gardener, I'm your gardener, and they yeah, say what like, does that mean? Yeah, I know. Yeah, like, like, the gar- who's like the fucking gardener. What I oh, know. please, uh, you know the man with the roses that cut co- the grow from his hands. You know, it's like, and he's like, I'm your gardener, and then you listen to like the original china white is like i am your gardener you know it's like yeah really messed up and like i can't figure out if like the little girl and the mother and the father are plants and like somebody's like harvesting the plants <laughs> yeah maybe it's or also if it's about cheek, like it's a really funny. fucking like it's about like a real home invasion you know like uh and it's weird too because i, I loved that song so much when i was younger yeah but now that I'm a dad and I have like two two little girls, you know, like it's creepy as all shit. You know, like that's, yeah, some of that true crime like, stuff. It's like I can't like, even. Your can't even daddy should have brought his gun. You know, <laughs> like what the hell is that? Um, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I, that's it. That is interesting. He has uh, he he writes dark shit sometimes. And you're right in the metal sense. I mean, that's the lyric lyrics are definitely. Uh, oh yeah, they're they're fucked up out there, man. Super but, metal. I mean, metal, metal for me, I don't, I told you, I don't, uh, I don't have the same metal upbringing as, as most people. Like when I think metal, I don't think most metal. Like I don't, I don't even, I don't, I don't know. It's okay, the, man. The, the, the uh, what do you call it? The, the seminal metal bands from the eighties and nineties. I just, I don't even, I don't even consider them. <laughs> I don't know. I don't listen to most hey, of them. I didn't grow up with them. I grew up listening to Christian metal, man. I, I feel it. Yeah, you know, I, I mean get, the first. The, I mean, I listened to the Black album, and, and then I listened to Load and Reload, and then I was like, "Oh, I should probably check out the other stuff." I mean, right. like, that's where I'm at, right? Mid-90s, sure. you know? So that's you get when I say something's heavy. Like to me, this is heavy. Like that's what I think. It is. I, I mean, would you is. would you say that he, uh, "Suck Out the Poison" is the heaviest Hughes Legend album? I would say it's. <laughs> let me think. Um, I think overall, from song to song, yes. But the, their heaviest, their heaviest songs, I don't think are on this album. But their heavy, it's their heaviest album from one, you know, track one to the end. Well, the heaviest he is legend song is definitely that's nasty, right? <laughs> yeah. There's, dude, wait, wait till wait till we get to it hates you. I will probably take. Oh my an god, hour dude! To like it's gonna get so that. fanboy in here it about you. it hates you. Speaking of it hates you, most deceptive album cover of all time. Yeah, totally. I look at this album cover with this cutout of a UFO, an ostrich head, labels from a label maker. You love it. And I think, okay, what alternative rock fake grunge is this from the 90s? <laughs> I was wrong. <laughs> Not a bad description, actually. <laughs> no. It's, 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 yeah, this, this, this again is, I think, where they start... They've come out of their their southern rock again, and like I feel like they've taken influence. Everything they they put out gets kind of recycled and built into what they're working on at the moment. So you get parts of everything, but then you get a different direction. They take it in a different direction. This album is my favorite. He has legend album. It is mine probably, as well. It's, it's probably in my top ten albums of all time. I, I mean, no, I'm not joking. I, it's just I've listened to it so many times. And this is when I really reached the pinnacle, like the peak of my like, like, wow, this is one of my favorite bands ever. Was was when I heard this album. 
I it don't is know why, as well. but it's just, I, I, just, just great. No, I, I totally understand. Um, <laughs> I totally understand, though. Like, it is equal parts hard rock, equal parts metal. There is no hardcore in this. This is this is this is nothing like I am Hollywood. Like we we've no, gone no, no, no. completely off the map. Yep. And you know, like Jeff said, it really kind of falls into like the butt rock Parts category. Of it, yeah, for but sure. for whatever reason, that, like but... I'm so like seduced by this band that I don't care. Exactly. Like it, it carries on. Like I mean, the humor is still there. The weird lyrics are still there. I mean, like the song everybody i know has fangs yeah just i mean cuts me deep you know when i listen to it um it's so heavy for rock you know it's so uncompromising it's weird it doesn't make a whole lot of sense if you if you digest the lyrics you know it's just like mm-hmm. you like as it's- a guy like surrounded by vampires or like what is the deal you know um they don't really scream on this record like they did on the previous ones. Not really. No, only in a few spots. Yeah, and I'm like, I like at the very at the end of everyone I know has fangs. Like, right. That that, but but it almost makes that part even more stand out because it's like, it just it has an emphasis on it. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> like I'm superficial enough to say that like, oh, they're not screaming anymore. I don't like it. But yeah, I mean, it's it hates you like grab me by the balls. Mm-hmm. And you know, I was like a hundred percent on board, and it's 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 very melodic too. There's a lot, his vocals again. I think his, his his singing. Not that it was bad before, but it's again it's improving. It's taking another turn. He's using it differently. I think he's he's taking himself in a, and again his personality is really starting to come through on this stuff. Cause he's so charismatic. I mean, I don't know if you guys have ever seen him live, but he is just like you cannot not watch the dude. Oh yeah. He's very animated. I don't. I don't know what it is about it, but maybe that's all part of this thing. But sure. Uh, I think. I think again. This this album was. It's just ha- the 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 bass the ba- the way the bass sounds. I probably my. I mean, every time I re- try to record bass or I record any bass parts, like I try to match Matt Williams's bass tone. Like that's why <laughs> I, I just love the way his bass sounds. So beefy. And yeah. the drums sound good. I remember reading reviews of it, telling me everybody was saying that the. Uh, the drums were, you know, it sounds so compressed. Everything sounds so compressed. And I'm like, I don't know. I, maybe I'm, maybe I got bad ears, but I think it sounds fucking great. I don't think great. it sounds it's compressed. Raw, I, think, I mean, I would say this is, this is a raw album. I mean, as far as, uh, I don't think it's overproduced. I don't, I don't think anything they've, they've done. I think there was more, they were more overproduced on I Am Hollywood than they are now. Dude, the, the bass on It Hates You rules the record. Yeah, it's so good. And I told, yeah. I, I've told that, uh, I keep saying I keep not, I'm not trying to like name drop, but I really did. <laughs> I had these conversations with with them when I saw them. I, I told Matt Williams that I said, I said, you're based on it. Hates you is like the best thing ever in the world. Absolutely. <laughs> I mean, it's so good. It's it just it's it's so full. And, and I'm not a big good. bass guy, but like, I mean, I, yeah, I can't really do it. not give that's, credit, you know, that's probably one of the first times I was like, oh, wow, the bass is important. I mean, as much I'm a guitar player, I don't really think about it. But that album, that album has just bass. Do we know oh. if more than one person in the band is a primary songwriter because he is legend is the only metal band or heavy band that I can think of that you from song to song you get distinctive differences in the songwriting style especially on the earlier records yeah it's almost like a John and Paul thing like you almost I get, mean. you can tell like okay whoever wrote this is not the same person that wrote the last song and that like everybody, everyone I know has fangs. To a uh, stranger danger, not the same feel. They, oh, they, not at all. They no. don't even feel the same. Somebody brought that idea to practice and said, "Okay, we're going with that." Are we? Are yeah, we not going to talk right. about Mean Shadows? Dude, that's the, one of the best songs in the world. Oh. That whole song. That's like the, one of my favorite songs ever. Best song in the album. Oh, so good. It's so good. Oh, Jinx, man. Right, sorry. <laughs> no, it's okay. You've it, got, no, it really I is. feel like it we're really on the is. same you know, yeah, wavelength. Yeah. You, you've got six and a half minutes. Talk <laughs> about Mean Shadow. Right. Oh, my God. It's First of all, it's Mean Shadows with an S. Yes, it's yeah. not a Mean Shadow. It's Mean Shadows. Man. Uh, probably Multiple. the rapiest He's Legend song ever. You can kick and scream if you feel better, but you'll never get away. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. It is also the heaviest He is Legend song ever. Right, that's what I'm I saying. Mean, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like the 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 last album, "Suck Out the Poison," was probably the the most consistently heavy. And this song has heavy parts, but it also has yeah. very like upbeat. 
some of yeah. the songs are on this album are really like ha- not happy but like melodic and they're you know they're sure. major chords and shit yeah, but, I mean, yeah this song is just like fucking hammer down especially like the second half of it oh yeah da, especially da, da, where it's da, like da. really melodic towards the yeah. end he's like don't you turn out the light <laughs> Don't yeah. oh, plan yeah. on shutting my eyes. You know, yep. oh, some yeah. things go bump in the night. Yeah. Like, I mean, yep. it's just, it, it affects me on a level that I didn't yeah. think that I had. Like, cause like, I got goosebumps, man. I'm not, I'm not yeah, joking. I'm not I mean, <laughs> up until I heard this <laughs> song, that I didn't really, I didn't really consider myself a rock fan. You know, I'm a metal yeah. guy. Right. I listen to metal. Right. But like, yeah, man, this song just got under my skin in a way that I just, I haven't experienced since then. And it did it in such a way that, like, when we got to the next He's Legend album, Heavy Fruit, it still stayed under my skin. And, like, by all intents and purposes, that's a record I shouldn't like. Yeah, yeah, they've definitely, again, they've gone in another direction, too, yeah, after that. Th- oh, my God, I love it. Like, even it just, I think uh, Don't Touch That Dial, just to name a few of my favorite songs, <sighs> that song is yeah. awesome. Um, I mean, God, they're, they're all good. I mean, I could listen to this album repeatedly, never change a song. Look forward to the next one. I don't know. I just this is undoubtedly my favorite album. But he's I, I, like I said, it's it's yeah. my favorite album, and I love what they're doing now. And their most recent album is great too. But I just love this album. I love the feel of it. It's it's like very cutting. Like it doesn't. It's just mm-hmm. very everything. Every aspect musically is sharp. Like the guitars are are sharp. The bass is heavy and mm-hmm. full, and the drums are really like punchy. And the vocal everything. And again, probably, probably top ten all time. I mean, I put it in my, my one of my favorite albums ever. I can't disagree at all. Um, you're not gonna. I'm not gonna. Yeah, you'll never hear any. I won't. I won't say anything bad about his legends. I don't think I could do it. No, <laughs> I just don't think I could. It's do impossible. It the they're they're sure, amazing. Sure it is, but I, I, I understand. Yeah, I, I, I understand. No, I say I understand where where there could be some some disconnect. Like if you're listening to it and you're like, I don't get it. I think this sucks. No, I totally no, understand. No. It. no, I'm just saying. Like, I get. I get it. I think the but biggest for me, thing a, for me, surprisingly, is uh, uh, like the vocal harmonies and stuff like that. It, it goes. That it's just way too mainstream rock for me, I guess, is what it is. Because musically, you know, it's it's not as mainstream as whenever they're doing all of the uh, layered vocals. Read the leaker lyrics, fucker. I told you <laughs> nothing re- mainstream I, about I, this at all. I, I hold, I'm talking about the sound. The lyrics, you already know. I'm not uh, sit down and and read the lyrics when I buy the CD. Sounds like your problem. I, well, I'm I'm an atmospheric guy. Like I put the CD in, I close my eyes, I and. I, I, I try to have an um, emotional response to what I'm hearing and it just like right now what we're hearing right now with the, the vocals it just it jars me it really just, yeah just not it just uh, I mean it, does it, everything for you have to be like oh like no I mean, absolutely not like I there's plenty of stuff I like with with clean vocals I mean my god my my as a little teeny t- tiny guy uh, I was a Michael Jackson fan before I was anything else so I mean yeah I mean, I, I was, I'm a little, little older than everybody else in the room, so I came, you know, I was a kid when Thriller came out, and that was the first album I bought. So, I mean, yeah, I, I do like clean vocals. Uh, it, it doesn't all have to be screaming for me. Okay. It just, I'm not, it's just the, uh, <laughs> like I said, it's the layered of the vocals. It just, it just, it, not my thing. Jeff, ironically, the, the, the name of this song is This Will Never Work by off of Heavy Fruit. I think that, <laughs> oh, <sorry. laughs> I think that, Jeff, for you, I think you just need more time, man. Yeah, it's it's. Uh, I don't know because yeah. I've these songs are gonna get under your skin, whether you want them to or not. Uh I don't know about that. Oh, well, I know. Yeah, I know. It's 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 weird. I'm normally not the contrarian. Uh, it's normally Dan's job, but the last two weeks, <laughs> I've I've been the one that's been poo pooing everything while everybody else is having a party, and I've been sitting in the corner brooding like I'm some little emo bitch. But yeah, that's. <laughs> That's kind of how I feel. I'm like, yeah, I, I just don't like anything. Did we do an Under Oath episode already? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to try not to, but yeah. <laughs> um, Heavy Fruit, 2014. Oh my God, Heavy Fruit. So like, I could not have had lower expectations for this because when he is legend went into the studio to record It Hates You, I kind of felt like they could never do anything better than that. Like, I kind of felt yeah, that way about Suck Out the Poison, and then I heard It Hates You, and I was like, okay, it's all good. But, like, can they do it three times in a row? 
And the only answer I have is yes. Like, I was hooked from the very beginning. This record is like, it's different than It Hates You. It's like pure sludge. <laughs> like, yeah, from definitely, beginning definitely to end. Yeah. I mean, it's it's like stoner rock almost. And well, uh, quite, quite the weed aficionados. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I you know, like for sure. And uh, I really, uh, I love this record because it was like, almost more so than it hates you it was like he's finally being like honest about yeah. how he views the world you know like and uh i i can't even to this day i still can't get past it i mean i know they i know they put out a new record since there since then but i'm like still really stuck on heavy fruit yeah i think they this is when i, I start to notice again every every album that they've come out with and this is what the, I like when bands do this, and that maybe this is one of the reasons that I like everything they come out with. I feel like they pro, their their progression they're still they're still at an upward trajectory. I mean, oh yeah. Again, I'm so biased. It's not even funny. I love the band, and oh, I, I always you. have I, I always have pretty good expectations, and they always meet them. They've met them every time, so I feel like yeah, hey, these guys are just a good band, and I like them a lot, and I buy everything they put out. Mm-hmm. But their tra- trajectory has been. You know, like it never like I don't ever feel like it plateaus. Like okay, no, I feel like it only gets better. Yeah, I think this is this is another step in that direction of like they get and every time they put out an album, there's more and more like just overall he is legend vibe all over. Like they're they're almost finding themselves now. What ten ten years later? Well, at this at this point, it would have been what seven years later. Sure. No, heavy fruit. Heavy fruit was fourteen. I'm thinking so fourteen. So yeah, I mean they've been they've been a band for a long time. And they've come out of that metalcore sound, the southern rock sound. Yeah. They put out "It Hates You," and then they took a hiatus. So who knows what they were into at that point? Right, a lot of weed. Yeah, I'm sure. And then yeah. this album, this <laughs> yeah. album, I just showed. Like, this, yeah, this uh, this album, and then and few, which we'll talk about. Mm-hmm. This album feels like he is legend. I don't know how to explain that, but when I think he is legend now, I don't even think about nine one zero two five or he, or I'm Hollywood or really. I mean, I I kind of think about uh, suck out the poison yeah. now. I feel like right then is like. I almost don't even think back to that. I think back to like it hates you and, and heavy fruit are like that's the band that they are and that's what they've become and oh, that's what yeah. they're trying to get to. And they had to work out through they had to navigate through the scenes and then they've come out of it and this is I think this is this is what he is legend is. I feel like from it hates this you album. on, there's no gimmick. Exactly, yeah. I totally agree. You know, right, the lyrics are starting to become a little bit more open, personal. More real. Um, yeah. Still rapey. He's not yeah. Exactly, yeah. very rape. Yeah, <laughs> um, but yeah, like it's it, there's no gimmick. It's not like okay, well, here's the melodic singing part, and then now we're gonna go into yeah. screaming breakdowns, you know, heavy stuff. Is that a shot at me? No. <laughs> Unless oh, back you th- to, not back to the clean. The, say back to the clean singing too. Like I don't. I guess I've never felt that Skylar was a clean singer. He's always had a little bit of a grit to his his singing voice. Oh yeah, well, especially on "Suck Up the Poison." I mean, he was just pure grit. I think that was a big change. I mean, not to go back to that album. I know we just covered it, but that and he's clear. He's almost like he's clearing back up a little bit too. Maybe he realized that. Maybe he didn't. I don't know. Maybe he realized he was. Uh, he didn't. He didn't like the way he sounded, but I think it fit that album perfectly. Oh my and god! Then, yeah, it did. But but I think his vocals have always been. I just I just know it's him, and I just like I like that I know that I'm hearing what he sounds like and like who he is comes through in his his singing. I've always liked that about them. Well, and it's like more of a realization. Like I mean, not to bring the in flames th- stuff up again, but like you know, oh like god, Jeff in, hit the dirt. In this case, <laughs> it was justifiable like it it made sense that like maybe it hates you on was more honest about what their influences were yeah than the previous records whereas like with a band like in flames it's like you know you're clearly just doing this to try to sell records Yes, I don't think that he as legend is doing yeah, that I, I mean they feel might, that have, way. They I might mean, have found a if anything they they've, have, they've sold fewer records yeah because they don't sound like I am Hollywood anymore. Yeah, I think people still think that I am Hollywood is you know one, the only album that he as legend ever put out. Oh, those guys are still around, and it's like yeah, well, yeah and, I, and I think they're getting better. Yeah, I and think they put out a solid gold. You know, I I, I just I just think that they, they sound better. They they've at this album this this point, um, 
and I kind of, I, I always like everything that they do. And I've always been the same way with Incubus is like for six months, I'm like, oh, they suck now. And then I'm like, <laughs> wait a second. Yeah. Like they've just kind of had a different angle. And you're like, no, no, they're still kick ass. But I, you know, under- I understand. Yeah. Except for the, except for, uh, if not now, when that, that Incubus album should just be whew, gone. Take it off the map. Doesn't exist. Sorry. Not to go in that direction, but I was kind of done during light grenades, but, um, that's just because there's a certain part of me that holds this into of death metal, so yeah, it's you can only go so far. You can right. only go so yeah. far away from that. <laughs> I mean, and I can get, I can get as far yeah. as like the latest Heat's Legend album, you know, with that mindset. Speaking of the latest Heat's Legend album, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you ready to hear Joe's input on all this? Yeah, you don't want to hear it on few. Oh, I do. This is the one I'm not a fan of. Really? I don't know why. It it. He is legend progresses. I gotta stand up for this. Oh, he's, I like it. Over the ten <laughs> years of records they were putting out, and I mentioned it earlier, they they kind of progressively slow down as they go. You can hear on each record another influence sneak in. There's times in "Suck Out the Poison" where I hear Showbread, and I never hear that again. There's definitely times in Suck Out the Poison where I hear them, at least I think they're making fun of Mudvayne, because that was a thing. <laughs> I get to, you know, Heavy Fruit, and my, my, my response was, somebody was listening to Truthless Heroes when they mixed this. Because I'm not going to say they wrote it listening to Truthless Heroes. And then I got to Few, and I'm like, I don't know. I don't know if they just took too much time off, or if they ran out of energy. You commonly hear that bands that are very intense over a period of time, the fans point out that that record, that that's where you lost me, or it feels wrong, it doesn't feel the same anymore. If they were more commercial, I would accuse them of being commercialized and not putting as much effort into it, but... How can you listen to a song like Sand? Oh, yeah. And not be, like, completely moved. Like, you have no soul at that point. I think I still had <laughs> I Am Hollywood on the brain, honestly. Don't yeah, get me wrong, I'm going to give it another it, it, listen granted, seven. this guy and this guy have had a week to figure it out. Yeah, you can tell that we've been listening. I've had, like, since, ten since plus years. Go. Yeah, yeah. Like, I mean, I've, I've all, I, I feel like I've grown up with the band. Mm-hmm. And when it, it's, it's, it's kind of getting, getting to this point with this album. I mean, to me, I love it because... I've listened to their progression, and it, and it feels like a logical step. It um, does. I feel yeah. like that's, again, again, I think this is like this is the band that they're they're becoming, and mm-hmm. they've they've had it. They've been heading in this direction since since uh, suck out the poison. I agree. It hates you. Was was I don't know. How, it, it's just they've they have a they have a feel to them. Like they they have they know what kind of band they are, and I think they're starting to write songs that that they really want to write, yeah. and they're not really concerned about. Like what scene? What would you? What would you kind of? What, what genre would they fit in? What scene? I would just call it rock. It's I rock would say, and roll. yeah, rock, hard rock. Yeah, it's hard rock. I mean, like mm-hmm. that, this is to me, this is what hard rock should be. It's, it's got, it's got melody. There's, ke- there's catchy. There's some catchy songs. He writes sure. catchy melodies. You know, and the songs fit. They're short. They're not super long. I mean, there's nothing really over. I mean, the very last song is six minutes, but right. I mean, I don't know. I dig it, but I can, I can see that like, if you just went from I am Hollywood to this in a week, then it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> no, it doesn't. <laughs> And they, I've said that the, the members have changed, but the core is there. I mean, really, it's the, the three of them are the core. But um, yeah, I mean, I think they're just finding out who they are. I don't mind bands, you know, stepping out and going in different directions and trying new things. That's always actually, that's an important thing to me uh, as I'm going through a band's discography. I don't want the same, you know, repetitive thing over and over again. It's just whenever they moved, you know, it was really whenever they they went to the southern rock thing that just it lost me, but like you, like you guys said, I only had uh, a, a week to figure it out, you know. And and I did. I, I listened to, I probably listened to each each uh, album six times in the past week. So I've done a lot of listening because I've been trying, yeah. trying and trying and trying to like it. Because normally, I can figure out pretty quickly why I do or don't have a connection. Like it was easy for me to, you know, say why I didn't care for Callisto. It's been a. I, I've been pretty silent this this episode because. I don't have any uh, genuine input because it, it's been a it's been a tough one for me to figure out on why I just 
I'm not a big fan of them other than the fact that it they, they do have that mainstream rock vibe. And I think that's kind they of a, that, that's but I I just view that that's the that's the cop out answer. I I want to uh, be I agree with you though. I want to but I want to be I able to uh, Yeah, I, I want to be able to give, you know, you know, more in depth than, than that, but I, I I can't. I just don't know I don't know um exactly how I feel yet. Even even with me listening to this band more in a compressed time than I did with any other band in the in our episodes. It but. takes a minute. Yeah, I think so. To really sink in. I mean, I'm not gonna lie, when I first heard It Hates You, I was kinda like Why is it not metal like Suck Out the Poison was? Yeah, they're different albums. Yeah, but over time I it really it really grew on me. I think that's the case too, because I make them listen to all their all their albums now, I and mean, even going back further, it's like I said, it's mm-hmm. kinda like a I, it's weird. I kind of stop at, like, I am Hollywood has great songs on it, but like overall as a record, like it's not even, not even one of the top ones for me. But because I, no, I like, the, I like close. what they've gone into, um, and I feel like to go to listen to "Suck Out the Poison," it's definitely like an exaggerated. It, it's what they're doing now on steroids. Like they've it really exaggerated the southern rock vibe. It was really over, not over the top, but it was. You could hear it, and you're like, this is a southern metal record. You know, it was, was hand fisted. Yeah. So like it's sometimes things go so far one direction and to, to overcorrect themselves like they did that and they probably went hey that sounded cool we like that style and then they kind of they kind of navigate you know gravitated more back towards like the center but they they went out there and grabbed that vibe oh yeah brought it back into what they used to do so you kind of have this combination of psychedelic sludgy melodic catchy rock songs I yeah I think they always wanted to be a rock fan. I, th- I think right now that this is the band that they wanted to be. I think right now is where they're at, and I feel like they're they're hitting their stride. I mean, they're on, I mean, they're on a pretty good sized label. They're getting a lot of push. I mean, they're uh, they're still they still sell records. Oh I mean, yeah, they, they're they crowdfunded this album and they exceeded their goal. I mean, they did it on their own. Yeah. So I mean, like they still have a, a fan base, and and then I, f- I feel like right now is they're getting to be their their biggest. Maybe they don't. I don't know how to explain it. But I feel like they have the most attention on them. Sure. Since since I am Hollywood, at least. Oh yeah. So I think they're right where they want to be. I think this is the band that they want to be. Is this album? Few, and Heavy Fruit are right there, and then it hates you on the back end of that. But I just I just the direction they're going in is uh, it's cool with me. <laughs> but I love them. I was actually because I, I use Spotify and I just going through the, you know, it gives you the top five plays uh, yeah. of each song. And that that was actually one thing I was rather surprised. I I thought because of the style of music, and they and I and I will give them that they they do this style of music really really well. It just not for me at least not right. yet. I thought they'd have a whole lot more listens. I, I was kind of surprised that you know they don't have anything over a million listens on Spotify. There's a lot of people that really want just I am Hollywood. Yep. Again and again and again and so, again. So in other words, it's it's all those post hardcore people that they that don't want people to to change their style and right they, and they still just want for, what they want and yeah. they've kind of gotten pigeonholed with that and everything that they've done since then i guess it's it just not catching on yet i don't know sure i, I, I mean this, like, this, this sound is like the sound that should be popular this is what you know most of you know mainstream like you know hard rock radio would be this sounds yes, exactly what they'd want to pick up it and you know and put it in rotation and put it in heavy rotation at that well, it was the thing, yeah. same thing with S. Cities Burn, you know? They had a screaming vocalist, and then he quit, and then they went to, like, a more singy, like, punk indie style, and nobody gave a shit. And I feel like yeah. he is legend is criminally underrated because people aren't listening to the new stuff. I, yeah, I agree. I mean, if they followed the progression, if, I, I bet a lot of people dropped off after I Am Hollywood and said, oh, well, yeah. I, don't want to do the, I don't want to do the Southern metal thing. This mm-hmm. is kind of a little cheesy. Yeah. Which I would understand if, if you didn't like it and that was your reasoning. Like, that makes total sense. It's a, That was a big departure. Yeah. Well, well see, but, I like, like the people uh, that, Go ahead. I said, go the, people ahead. That, the, I said the people that grabbed a hold of, uh, you know, um, Suck Out the Poison were like, All right, I'm going to take the ride with you. I don't know where we're going. But it's, this is an I Am Hollywood, which I loved, and Suck Out the Poison is weird, but I'll give it time. And then once you listen to it, you're like, oh, it, I, I Am Hollywood is in there, but it doesn't sound, it doesn't sound the same. I mean, it's, it's, it's all in there. This, the I band feel like is it's a different band at this point. Yeah, it's, it's there. I mean, like the music is in you'll, you'll You'll find similarities. I mean, they're there, but you got to be willing to go, well, okay, I got to listen to some Southern metal. 
and I'm just I just want to listen to like you know the the, the metalcore bands of the time. I mean, I can see how they, they can shake people off with that. Maybe they wanted to, and right, they they've kind of said, "Come come on with us. We're going to go in a different direction." And yeah, you can, you can take it right or not. You know, the interesting thing is, I don't really like necessarily hate like the hard southern rock stuff. Like I like uh, like Blackstone Cherry. I don't know if you know if you're familiar yeah. with them or not. Yeah, but yeah. yeah. I mean, and there can I guess you could pretty much consider them like a pretty hard southern rock kind of kind of feel. I don't know. Maybe I just need to listen to it more, like you guys say, and, and maybe my, my yeah. mind will change. Sure. It might you might just have an appreciation again for like the um, just the atmosphere of it, even if you wouldn't like it, but you can say that like they are their their own thing. Yeah, they I sound might enjoy like the follow up to this episode where Jeff sees the light. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'll come back on and just, there just you sit go. back and listen to your revelations. Yeah, that's fine if it happens. I'm I'm more than happy to. Uh, I, I'd much rather be in love with a band than than not. I'm not one of those I, I, right. that I hate everything type of people. I want to <laughs> I want to love everybody and everything. So the fact that I couldn't damn hippie. Yes, I am. I'm <laughs> I, I'm a total hippie that loves metal. So figure that go. one out. Oh, it's an interesting, it's an interesting perspective though to to, to be uh, here a, a band that I love and I've always loved and will always love and I'll buy everything they put out to hear the complete opposite and be like I don't get it and I'm like how do you don't I mean I just like to hear the idea that it doesn't click with everybody and that's that's right. the that's the cool part about music is that it's just it's not it's not everybody's got their own taste and it's it's cool to hear other perspectives on it so so I respect I totally respect that. I think you're crazy. Oh, I very much think he's wrong, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. See, most of the nice. stuff I listen to to relax to is like weird, futuristic <laughs> spaceship, right? You know, yeah. Technical metal. So oh, I love space. I got a sweet spot for space. Doesn't yeah. I might, I might say yeah. something about that a little later. Here, here's the one thing that I heard you say, Dan, you yeah. mentioned that when Jeff said he didn't get it, you said, read the lyrics. Yeah. Should I have to? Yeah, you should. See, that's where we strongly disagree. I, no, I, I no, dude, field. it's okay. It's, it's one st- thing to it's one thing to be a passive listener. You know, anybody can anybody can fucking you know put a disc in and listen to it. But that that takes me out of the element. I I look no. as, as a, yeah. It, it, I'm saying what it does for me. I'm not saying what it does for no, you. No, because the element is the finish is the finished product. Well, that's because you're a lead singer. You're looking at no specifically at the lyrics, specifically at the lead vocalist. I'm looking at it as a collective whole as I'm a band. I'm not just looking at the lead vocalist. I can I can analyze music just because I don't play guitar. Okay. Aha. But no, that's, I'm just, I'm that's just the what thing. You at. said it's about the final product. <laughs> Yeah. So why should I have to read the lyrics to get the final product? Because you can listen to the guitar and you can absorb it on a fundamental level, like a mental level, an unconscious level. But I think the lyrics really play a lot into that. And for me, good lyrics are lyrics that accentuate what you're hearing. I know what you're saying. I, I I would say I'm not I'm not really a lyric guy either myself. I mean, it's not uh, a make or break thing. When I was when I was like I mean when I say younger, I mean like maybe let's say in my twenties, like if you didn't have a message with your song, like if you weren't sure. trying to like, like fuck the system, then yeah, what, yeah. what are you doing? What's your point? You know, like why, why do I, why, why do I want to waste my time with you? I eventually, you know, years went by. I kind of got away from that and was like, if the song's cool, it's cool, whatever you sing about, whatever you want. And I'm not necessarily a lyrics guy, but I, I would agree. So I agree with you that you shouldn't, the, the lyrics don't, the lyrics shouldn't be an important part of a good song, but they can be. And in this case, and he is legends case, I think they are part of, of the band like they make up you know a quarter or you know whatever percentage you want to put on it yeah it's all part of the overall vibe and sound is because of what skylar does it's what adam does what matt does i mean like it's all it's all there it's the package so i I agree with you that the lyrics are important for this band but they're not necessarily important for every song that's good so i i I know i'm like right in the middle i agree i mean all these people listen to pantera there's no way (laughs) there's no way that the lyrics are important you know, do, yeah. <laughs> do we need to have Eric back and he can defend Pantera too? Uh, maybe we'll oh, see. Okay, I can do a little defense. Now, now, here's the thing, though. What I said was, why should I have to read the lyrics? This is the old black metal argument. Just because you put a lyric sheet in there doesn't mean it it adds to the song when all you're doing is going. Aah! It's like, no, <laughs> you didn't say. You know, I'll have a cheeseburger with fries. I don't care what you write down. You didn't say that. So. Why do I have to sit and read the lyrics to get he is legend? Um, because I think 
I think some of the cheesier stuff that they do is a little bit more tongue in cheek. Yeah, I would agree. Then, you know, like, you know, Jeff hears it and he hears theory of a dead man. But maybe they were trying to sound like theory of a dead man because it was funny or because it was ironic. I've never had that comparison in my mind. I don't listen. I've never really listened to theory of a dead man, though. I know what they sound like, but I wouldn't say that. But you're missing out on it because you don't get it. I think if you got it, it would absorb into you. The lyrics would start to, you'd start to hear the lyrics and be like, oh, that's kind of funny the way he put that. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's part of like his, his, his wordplay is funny. And yeah. the more you hear it, the more, the more you understand his lyrics, you're like. And maybe that was part of my problem. I, I did not focus on the lyrics. But that takes time. That's not, when, it's not, just, when it's yeah, not rapey, it's but, hilarious. Yeah. No, there's, there's, there's lyrics in there that I think I, I, I hear now that I even didn't even hear before. And I kind of like chuckle at because just the way he puts certain things, it's so it's very it's very him. Like I, I told <laughs> you, I hear him. Like I feel like I know who he is based on his lyrics and his the way he is like he, it's he's not putting up a front. He is not fronting at all. Right. And his lyrics are uh, an extension of his his personality. So that's why I feel like it's it's part of this band's. He's a comedian. You know, yeah, yeah I, w- I would think so. Yeah. Well, Eric, I'm going to go ahead and say for you, final thoughts on He is Legend. I would say my final thoughts are uh, I'm glad that they are a band that still exists from an era that was uh, important to me. The early 2000s metalcore was uh, was a scene that I, I fell into with some of the heavier stuff that I'd heard at the time. It was big uh, in my upbringing musically as a guitar player and otherwise, and it was cool to latch on to that and then take the ride with them as they've gotten uh now i wouldn't say off into a different sound but they've, they've gone in a different direction i've followed them that whole way i think it's influenced the way i play guitar the way i look at music and just just my overall attitude towards a lot of things musically and i think that they're probably i would say they're probably one of the most like you said dan criminally underrated i feel like more people should know about them the guitar playing is excellent. The lyrics are great. The, 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 the band is, it's a, they're a solid band and I feel like they're finally, they found themselves on the last several albums, last, I'd say last two albums. This is the band that they want to be and I'm looking forward to where they go in the future and uh, I'm just, I'm just excited that, that they are, that they're, that they're out, they exist. I mean, I'm, I'm a fanboy. I wouldn't hide that. I don't have any bad things to say about them and uh yeah, that's it. Hopefully, I, I portrayed my my love for the band over the course of this hour. Or so, Jeff, I'm gonna take a guess <laughs> and say, are your final thoughts? I don't get it, but I'm trying really, really hard. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm gonna be the uh, the rotten meat in this uh, bologna sandwich here because, uh, yeah, well, as long I, as it's bologna, I'm still eating it. <laughs> There's a lot of things I don't get. I don't get why they're not popular because I think they have a very popular style a very popular sound they they should be you know they should be doing the whole arena circuit if you ask me just it, but that's also a sound that i'm not a big fan of either so i mean it's kind of kind of weird on how i'm looking at it but yeah I, I i don't get it for me it doesn't doesn't do anything for me emotionally uh and but then again i also didn't check the lyrics so that's partly my fault uh but I also don't get why they're not popular because they got a really nice, you know, southern rocky uh polished vibe to them that, you know, it sounds like they should be famous, I guess is what I uh, maybe part of the reason why I put that comparison to like Theory of the Dead Man because I, I kind of get the same the f- first initial feel is fairly similar uh for me. It's just like, you know, hey, you know, here's this guy with these raspy vocals and this, you know, these these bluesy riffs, you know, it, it but it's overall it's, you know, pretty heavy rock. And I was like, that's why I made that comparison to Theory of a Dead Man. But yeah, it just not not my not my thing. But that's okay. I I like uh, more, you know, spacey weird crap. So that's 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 more. It's probably more my fault as a listener than it is their their issue as a performer. It just uh, I'm not their target audience. Is really what it comes down to. I'm going to defer to Dan after I cheat and say, what band do you like? You should be listening to He Is Legend. Dan, your final thoughts. I think if you're not into what He Is Legend is throwing down, you might be bedridden. <laughs> because Dan's going to come to your house. And, <laughs> and, and, my kneecaps. and potentially yeah. deaf. 
<laughs> no, I like death. No, death. Oh, death. Oh. So, I think. I think with his legend, what it really boils down to, it's like, cause like I'm a predominantly metal guy. Like Jeff, I like space music. I like I like kind of melodic out there. Not necessarily what's like popular on top forty radio, but there's a certain passion to his legend that is really I'm unable to ignore. And I think they they lay a really solid foundation for what hard rock could be. Because, yeah, sure, you know, if you want to compare it to Theory of a Dead Man or whatever, like, I think those comparisons are valid, but I think from a lyrical perspective, I like like the return of songs that I have to, like, think about and songs that I have to, like, really dissect and, and really do a little bit of the legwork myself. And so that's what I like about his legend is that I have to really think about it, and it, it kind of, uh, kind of expands my mind beyond just what I think and what I do. Uh, so th- you know, for that, for that, the band gets a free pass, even for not necessarily being metal all the time, but you know, kind of providing something for me that nobody else really provides. Eric, thanks for doing this, man. This was I'm glad fun. you guys asked me to do it, man. I'm glad, I, I, and a perfect band for me to come on and just discuss that I've had uh, so much interaction with uh, musically for so many years, and it's been an important band to me. So it's cool to be able to talk about it in uh, in full like this over the course of their career. Yeah, because it's one it's one of my favorite musical you know career career trajectories. I just think where they've gone, where they started, and where they are now is uh, it's it's one of, it's one of the few that just keeps like getting better and better. So to come on and talk about the start to now was cool and i'm glad you guys asked me to do it and i dig your show and i appreciate the uh, yeah the opportunity to chat with you guys it's been fun yeah, yeah it was a ton of fun yeah we're glad to have you on hey i gotta ask uh, one quick question yeah and that is we, we always try to do uh, our album of the week on what we're enjoying or what we're listening to the most but since they just had a new release i'm guessing it might be the new uh He's legend album, or you got something else on the uh, on the burner? Album of the week. Yep. Let me look. Let me see what what I've most recently listened to. I, I I'm I'm weird about stuff. I told you guys. I'm not. I mean, I'm a metal guy. I'm false metal, according to Josh Toomey. I'm a poser. <laughs> I would say the album that I was I'm well, most recent. But Josh is also a bass player, so yeah, he doesn't count. He doesn't. I mean, he he has opinions, but I mean, you, know, just, <laughs> you just turn them down in the mix. You turn his opinions right down. You know what I mean? Okay, I would say my, my my album of the week. I mean, I've listened to some cool stuff and I've found some cool new stuff. But something that I've I, that recently came out came out last was it, no, it was a weekend before that. Basically, the, the new Three Eleven album is Three uh, Eleven's a, a band that I've listened yes. to for my entire, for, forever, and uh, they get a lot of shit, uh, especially in the guitar community because people think that Tim Mahoney's tone is garbage, and it's not the greatest. But the songs are so good, and the, I've loved the band forever. So I would say Mosaic, the new Three Eleven album, is probably my my favorite new release and I've probably listened to it the most over since it came out. And and there's a bunch of stuff mixed in there that I've discovered, but new release album of the week, probably three eleven mosaic. I'd have to say, I'll have to check that out. Cause it, you know, I, it's funny that we mentioned them because I, I talk about how I don't, I'm not a big fan of like mainstream music. Well, uh, that's, that's one that I, I actually, I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoy. Grassroots is like, yeah, man, they're just oh good. Oh my God vibes it's good good fun man they always they play they play they do summer tours they're gone all every july they're out playing they play all the time they've been around forever you know like they've got a great fan base people follow them i mean it's just, yeah, i've seen them live there and they're a they're a hell of a lot of fun yeah, yeah they, they play really forever are. they play so many songs they, they sound great i've never heard them sound bad i saw them in college they played at central michigan university which is totally random but they played there with alien ant farm and that i mean like i've seen them a bunch of times and uh just just always always putting out good albums very cool what about you, Dan? What do you got for this week? Uh, <laughs> not super metal, but uh, at the drive-in, Inter Alia. Okay, I really enjoy that one. And, I like uh, it at the drive-in. So yeah, yeah. Uh, it's it's cool. It's a new album by that band, and they were broke up for a while, and now they're back, and they have a new album, and uh, you should check it out. Dan and I unboxed the Face Down Records twenty for twenty. 
So I've been listening to Pride of the Wicked by War of Ages. Ooh, that's a good Ooh. one. I know. Some of the <laughs> best about that, man. Some of the best rip off Gothenburg death metal riffing you'll <laughs> ever hear. So what? And I'm enjoying <laughs> yeah, it. That's good stuff, yeah. man. It was yeah. back when it was okay to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still okay to do that if you ask me, but hey. No, I actually I, I'm listening Go listen to, to Scar Symmetry. Oh, I love Scar Symmetry. Yeah, I know you do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, 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 there's a new band that's, well, it's new-ish, at least in the States, from uh, Denmark, and they're called uh, The Interbeing, and then the new album is uh, Among the Amorphous. I like is, those guys. Oh, do you? Yeah. Oh, I yeah, think, I was uh, listening to that. Yeah, there was, on your recommendation. Yeah, I texted him in the middle of the week. I said, dude, you got to check this out because it's, it's totally spaced out, real technical metal, and I was like, you're, you're going to love it. Plus, the guy's a baritone. I love that. You, you, you don't always get a front men in, in, uh, in metal that are baritone, so I was right there with that one. I got you, buddy. All right. <laughs> and Eric, Dan's about to repeat it when I say it, but we always like to tell our guests, man, the door is always open. Anytime you want to come back and talk about insert name of band here, you just hit us up, man. Yeah, we're, absolutely. we're down to do this again. We're totally down, yeah. Definitely. I'm also down because this was fun. I, I figured it would be fun, and it was way more fun than I thought it would be. And I thought it was going to be a lot of fun. So I, I think we just got a, a new, a new guest it. host in. Yeah, sounds good to me, man. <laughs> this, is per- this, is per- this is perfect, too, because I'm also, on, my, on my, se- my self-imposed summer vacation. Yes, I thank you so much for coming on whenever you were on your summer vacation. Yes, yeah. I mean, the, 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 the palm trees and my ties are flowing. and For uh, sure. Really, I just I feel like I'm doing more stuff. I just want to take a break, take a breather. I've been doing it for like two straight years, sure. and but I do love it. So to, to sit down and do podcasts with you guys is like, God damn, I love podcasting. So I mean, sure. it's like took the time off just to, just to recoup and refresh and not worry about scheduling anything. But well, look at it this way: you don't have to edit it. I get to do. All I know that. that's that's a beautiful. <laughs> thing. This guy does all the work. <laughs> I just get to turn the mics off like my guests do. <laughs> I just show up and talk. That's the best part. Yeah, and drink his beer <laughs> and drink that's my perfect. beer. Yeah. yeah. And on that note, this has been episode 21 of Discography Discussion. Thank you for listening. You can like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter at Discuss Metal. Subscribe to our podcast everywhere you listen to podcasts, including Google Play, iTunes, and Stitcher. Visit DiscussMetal.com for all things Discography Discussion. And please send questions and comments to Dan and Joe Show at gmail.com. If you have not heard Shoot the Shred, you need to check out everything Eric Hall puts out at shredpod.simplecast.fm. You got it. For some serious, serious shred. And episode 45, Adam Tambu's from He Is Legend. So check that conversation out. Yeah, I listened to that the other day. I was like, oh my God, somebody likes He Is Legend as much as I do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did a fanboy, fanboy a little too much on that. 